that we're making with, with that round thing I'm talking about, it depends on getting the area right. And if I make a, it too circular, I've got something that's too big. If I make it a parallelogram, it's too small. All of a sudden I can start making my magnetic field that's coming out of this thing wrong by five or 10%. And all of a sudden I created anomalies because I haven't made good squares. Also, as we're moving these squares, boy, if the previous square is good, we just build right onto the previous square and you know everything fits and it, it just makes the whole, log whole thing logistically much simpler. Um, in general, each of my wires will be just over 20 meters long. I, I actually usually have more on the end, but from tape to tape is 20 meters, plus or minus a centimeter or so. I've measured all of them. But so that I can rip wires and because things get old and so on and so forth, I go ahead and just put a little extra on it. So anytime you're chaining, just grab, you know, chaining meaning measuring a distance. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a lot of measuring of distance here. It always goes from tape to tape. Sometimes you screw up. So is this set to the right, the line bearing? Yes, two, two, three, eight. Two, three, eight, okay. yes. Okay, so 238 is your bearing. Yep, looking down this way. I'm gonna just see how Len did if, if his line is as straight as we hope. How much, uh, oh, he's only. That's not for me And uh, you do this on a big scale. Yep. Yeah. If I actually, the other, what I could do is drag 90 degrees off of it and keep yeah, turning yeah, at 148, yeah. 238. 148, 238. But don't do that. You can you can see that in your mirror. But you know, those two marks there, those are 90 off. If I now do the line up in my mirror onto the 290s, I've got a, a perpendicular. I've got the perpendicular. I don't have to reset anything. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got the two. Standing on a five meter loop, centering loop. Good enough. So, so there's a nice little square loop in the center. A square. Now, I know because of all the the physics of this thing. If I set up my, I set up a, a, a polarity on this thing, and it's just I just always use the same convention. I have red going clockwise on the receiver, and black going anti-clockwise, and that means that on my transmitter I will actually reverse that. So believe it or okay. not, because that's this is a big set of gears. I'm, I'm, I'm putting a current through the, the wire, which is setting up a vertical field. Doing that, it's actually driving a current through this thing, the other way, which is why mm. the opposite direction, which is what I measure here. So the strength of the current going through this thing talks to me about how strong the magnetic field is, right? If I drive that whole set of gears, this is just gears, electrical gears. This is a really expensive voltmeter. That's really all it is. It measures voltages and times. It's got a really accurate clock in it, and it's got a really accurate um, voltmeter in it. It's got eight voltmeters in it, so it's, it's an eight-channel thing. And I'm using channel two. The of it is exactly right. You can do a whole lot of different surveys with the same instrument. This is the little 12-volt uh, transmitter I'm talk I was talking about. And there is my 12 volt battery power supply. Um, you bet. Um, they have an office here in town and do a lot of surveys all around Australia. Uh, the, so the instruments are designed and built in, in Tucson. Um, a guy named Ken Zong was the, was the guy who started it. And uh, that's something that you all can be looking at as places to work when you're, when you're done is, is, is these sorts of companies. that are, as you do it, are, are, are variably interesting. This thing samples as a choice of sampling rates. We are taking somewhere between 600,000 and 800,000 sample voltages per second Whoa. with this machine. That's where the, that's why this is a voltmeter that you can't just go to Radio Shack and buy no. and put a regular clock into. We're taking literally 800,000 readings per second. So that's why this is something like a uh, 60 or $80,000 um, voltmeter. Um, that's all, right. that's all right. And you've got a picture of it too. The computer inside it, and it's got all the programs and all that stuff inside it. I'm not going to say that's a car bomb. No. When I, when I was doing this other survey 
when I was going over these uh, 44 gallon drums, I mean, that's metal. And metal is so much stronger a response okay. than anything we could have in the ground. But the decays just changed, like they were totally different. They this were, they cool really stuff. were crazy. And this is only a little crazy. I think yeah. you've just got, now it could just be some crap down there. I don't know, it's just a lake. So I'd probably do a 10 meter loop and, and really try to pin it down a little bit better. But yes. that's if I had the 